Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode three of the Endless Sky Let's Play. So that's the Let's Play where we are playing the game Endless Sky. If you want to know more about Endless Sky, go ahead and check out episode one. But a uh, quick summary. Actually, it's a lot to summarize quickly. So yeah, go ahead and check episode one. Or I think in the description of the video, there's a little bit of information about the game and stuff like that as well. But anyways, we are going to jump straight back into it. Uh, the, okay, the quick summary is just basically it's a story-based game, and so there's a big story and everything like that, and although it's sort of story-based, but then you can sort of keep going and do whatever you want and stuff like that at the same time, so, it, yeah, it's great. Anyways, we are going to go ahead and jump into the game. Now, hopefully this recording works okay. I, uh, I changed my file format, and so it, it should... It should be fine. I've used this format before, but anyways, yeah. So if there's any funny stuff with the recording, that could be the problem. Anyways, so let's get into this. So I discovered, actually, I already knew this already, but I was just playing around with it just now, that there's actually three ways to start the game, or rather to get back into the game that you were previously playing. You could go click Enter Ship on the bottom right of the screen there, and like that, but then that doesn't make a noise. So that, that's no fun. So let's press escape, get back to the menu. And you can click on load slash save. And then on the left, I explained this in episode one, but on the left you get your um, list of pi um, saves, pilots, and stuff like that. And so so you got that. And then in the middle, you got your previous, um, previous stops. So like if I were to click on the, the top one up here, you can see that in the middle column... It's got, like, previous planets you stopped on, whatever previous saves if you need to fix anything. If you're, if you accidentally, accident, blah, blah, blah. stop getting tongue-tied. I always get tongue-tied. <laughs> okay. If you uh, happen to accidentally, like, blow up your ship or something like that, you can go ahead and, and revert. But anyways, back to the point. So if we click on the save, that we, the, the pilot that we want on the left, then we can just go ahead and click load game in the bottom right. And now we've got a sound effect, so it's really, really exciting. And there's another way that when you load up the game to the main menu, if you just simply press escape, then it will take you right into whatever you were previously playing. So the last save that you were doing. So if you just press escape, then it'll do that, and I can flash this on and off the screen a whole bunch of times. Anyways, let's get on to the, uh, the game. So... Let's continue the story. So I don't remember where we were at. Oh, yes. We were trying to get up here to Tania Australis. And as you can see in the big red, or rather the small red text at the top of the screen, you have not yet mopped a root. Okay, the narrator's getting tongue-tied as well. Okay, Mr. Narrator. Actually, that's me. But anyways, Mr. Narrator, stop getting tongue-tied, please. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Okay, so anyways, let's continue. You have not yet mapped a route to this system. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Narrator. <laughs> Anyways, so we need to map a route to that system. So let's click Done, and let's uh, let's head out. First thing that I want to do is double-check the spaceport. That's always a good thing to do, because you might get some new missions or something like that. So anyways, we need to get to Tanya Australis. There's... Uh, there's two possible ways we could go. We could go where this this yellow line basically is our route. So if you don't understand how the map works, the map is basically the colored places are places you've explored already. The uh, the light gray places like this one are places you've explored, but there wasn't any uh, inhabited planets in it. So it didn't like mark it on the map. The dark gray places like this one and that one are places that you haven't explored yet. And you can see that actually, you click on any one of these planets and you can see on the left side, it says information about it. So this one is unexplored system, unknown government, and it doesn't know the prices of any kind of like food or anything. And then this one, you can see it has a name and it says it's a Republic planet all on the left of the screen. And then this one, it says the, uh, well, it's not a Republic planet because there aren't any planets. It's a Republic star system. Anyways, then the next one, this one, you can see it's a Republic plan uh, star system, and then it says the planet is New Greenland, 
and it's a friendly planet, and it's been visited, and all that kind of stuff, and it's got your all your prices of things, and yes, it's really neat. So anyways, we are trying to get up to here, and in order to get to there, we have to guess what the route might be, the best route to take. Probably either of them will get us there, actually, so let's just pick this one, click done, and depart. Yay! We're flying again! Okay, so anyways... Let's go ahead. We can actually fly around if you use the uh, the arrow keys and all that. You can you can move around and do some things. And then you can go ahead and we so in our map we have currently selected this system. You can tell that because the yellow line points there. So we can press our hyperspace jump button, which is J usually, and. There we go! Nice! So, let me know what you guys think about that flash. I had it off for the first little bit, and then I just turned it back on, and I kind of like it, although I find when you're playing the game for, like, uh, I don't know, like, eight or ten hours straight, it, uh, because <laughs> I have done that before, actually, but when you do that, I find that the flash can get really tiring. So, anyways, let me know what you guys think. But anyways, so now that we've explored this system, it has now opened up two new possibilities two new possible routes that we could take to get to Tania Australis. So let's try this one. Looks like it gets us closer. So I'm going to get, I'm going to jump to that one. Here we go. Okay. And now let's see. Oh, yes. Now we have a route directly to get to that st st system. And you know what? If we had taken this route instead, then we probably would have still gotten there. We just had to go to this one and then to that one, so it would have taken more fuel. But anyways, fuel's not a big deal because refueling is free. You just have to find a, a planet that has, like, inhabited people on it. Well, actually, not inhabited people, but um, inhabited planet inhabited with people. There we go. So we're landing on ingot. We should see if we can find any iron ingots or gold ingots or <laughs> anyways. By now. Your entire ship smells like brine and raw fish. Yes, that's right, because we were carrying those last time. Your entire ship smells like brine and raw fish. But as best you can tell, uh, but, but as best you can tell, the fish is still fresh enough to eat. The dock workers on Ingot offload it without comment and give you your payment of 35,000 credits. Nice. If you can line them up just right, says James. Rush deliveries can be your best source of income as a freighter captain. And keep your eye out for missions with large amounts of cargo, too, because your barge's hold is definitely big enough to handle them. And if you've got any cargo space to spare, and you know what the prices are going to be at your destination, be sure to stock up on something that you can sell for a profit. So he's basically telling us how best to manage our... Uh, our deliveries and stuff to, to keep our cargo hold going and get mo get uh, the most money and stuff like that. Anyways, so we could say here, what would you recommend if I want to do more than just carry cargo? Or we could say, was that what you did for your whole career? Hmm, I don't know which one to choose, actually. And if you want to try a different choice, then go ahead and download the game. It's a free game, so go ahead and, uh, and try that if you want to try a different choice. But... I don't know. <laughs> okay, so this one will tell us what he did. And this one will say, uh, what do you recommend if I want to carry more than just cargo? Now, our ship is very small. Although, you know, here's an interesting thing. The map near the starting place has changed a bit since when I started, so... Uh, I, I think I'll click on, on this one. So, what would you recommend if I want to do more than just carry cargo? He pauses for a moment to think, then says, Unless you want to do something really risky like hunting pirates, your best bet is to work with the Navy, or the Syndicate, or one of the local militias. Any of those would be a decent choice. Although, they've each got their own problems. If any of them offer you a mission, go ahead and take it. That's a good way to build connections and get to know the lay of the land. He glances toward the spaceport and says, Anyway, if you want to make one more trip with me, you know where to find me. Probably at the spaceport. That's just where he was looking. So before we go to the spaceport, let's go ahead and check some uh, some 
menus here. So trading, job board. I'm curious what's at the job board, actually. There's a lot of missions that take us very far away. And then there's some, these uh, light, these gray, um, darker gray ones are the ones that we can't actually fit in our ship. And there's some rush deliveries. Oh, whoa. Okay, this is a delivery way down there. There's no way we'll make it there in time with, with uh, having to discover the map along the way. And then there's this one, which is way out of the way as well. So I guess uh, we need to discover a lot more map. Oh, this is an interesting system actually here. You can see that we've got here the one that circled there, Por Porima? Um... It, you can see we have currently discovered the FECTA system. I'm probably pronouncing all these all wrong if there is a right pronunciation. So, <laughs> anyways. So, anyways, so, you can see we've already discovered the FECTA system, except that there's no route to the Perima system. That's the way there is, that it is sometimes. There's sometimes no route to places. I'm guessing to get to the Perima system, we have to go down to this system down here and jump across from there. I'm guessing that's the way that that works. Anyway, so there's transport missions. There's all kinds of different things. Anyway, so let's exit the map. Let's go into the bank. Aha! So here is a thing that... So what we did in the first episode, if you didn't see that one, is we took out a loan to buy a, <laughs> a rusty starship, which was not the best idea. But anyway, so we took out a loan and bought our starship. It was like a 400,000-ish credit loan. 400 and more than 400,000 credits. And now we are trying to pay that back. It's essentially the idea. So what happens now is anywhere we go, we, uh, we, we get basically... So if every time you make a hyperspace jump from one system to another... So every time you, like, on your map, every time you jump to one system or to another system or to another system or another system, every time that takes one day. Every day, you can see what all these numbers mean on the, the mortgage line there. What all these numbers, payment on the right, payment of 2,242 credits, that is every day we have to pay 2,000 credits towards paying off this mortgage. Now, I don't want to have to pay that for as long because <laughs> that means that we have like every time we jump a system, we have to keep making deliveries so that we can make enough money to keep paying our mortgage and it's like yeah, that's that's more than I <laughs> than I want to do. So, I would like to have no payments, so I want to get that paid off as soon as possible. Now, here's the other thing that Paying it off soon is actually a lot better than waiting because of this line here. You can see interest in uh, roughly the middle. Interest, it says 0.400%. What that means is that every time we have to pay, uh, like every time we make one of these payments of the the required amount, the 2,242, Every time we pay that, we have to pay an extra 0.4% in interest. So you can do the math if you like to try to figure out how much that would be over the course of like paying off the entire thing. It, essentially, what the guy said when we when we bought when we took out this mortgage at the bank there, he said that you have to. So he said that if you kept paying the minimum amount, so the amount that it automatically takes out of your pocket every time you go another day, he said, if you keep paying the minimum minimum amount, which includes interest and everything like that, you will end up paying the principal amount, which is there, you can see that's 425,000 credits, plus an extra, like, 400,000 credits in interest, which means that if we just, like, didn't pay any extra, we would essentially pay 800,000 credits, which is double what we would otherwise have paid. Hopefully that's making some sense. But anyways, so yeah, so if we keep like just paying the minimum whatever, then <laughs> then that's what's going to happen is we're going to pay a whole ton of extra payments, which we don't want to do. 
as you can see, this term here, what that means, 356, I think what that means is how many days you would be still paying off mortgage if you kept paying the minimum. So 356 days, that's like almost a full year, and I don't want to wait that long. So what we can do, if we click pay extra here, what happens is, it pays. It still pays the 2,200 every time we, we jump a system, like every time a new day happens, because it takes one system to jump a day. But anyways, it still pays the 2,242 every time a new day happens, but and including the interest on that and all that kind of stuff. But if we click Pay Extra, then any extra that we pay, we don't have to pay the interest on. So it essentially means that we can get rid of this mortgage with having to pay a lot less than we otherwise would need to. So that's the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and pay extra here. Now the question is how much extra to pay. So if you can see, I'll just cancel this for a second. If you can see up in the top left of the screen, top right of the screen rather, it says we have 113,800 credits. And so obviously we can't pay the entire 400,000 credits because we don't have that many. So we could pay 113,000 credits. Except that if we do that, then we will not have a sufficient, like we'll not have what we need to keep paying the, the minimum payments and stuff. Like we won't have it enough to pay that 2,200 every time another day happens because we will have paid it all off. And I don't know how often we're going to be getting, like, jobs for, like, how much and all that kind of stuff. So I'd like to have enough money in the bank to keep paying the minimum payments for, I don't know, maybe, let's say, a month-ish. Like, let, let's say 25 days. So something like that. So anyways, I, I ju I'm just guessing. It seems like about 50,000 credits in the bank is, is a good way to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do is I'm going to... I'm going to pay off a whole bunch of this mortgage, like pay off a whole bunch of my credits toward this mortgage with keeping 50,000 credits for emergencies or perhaps for getting a, a turret on the ship or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, so let's go ahead and pay extra. So we have 113,000 credits minus 50,000 credits that we want to keep. So we can pay... 63,000 credits. There we go. Okay, so now you can see what happened. All of a sudden, on the left, our, well, not on the left, but the uh, the principal column, you can see it was 400-ish thousand, 400 and like 25 or something thousand credits that we had to pay, The uh, that the principal, that was the loan that we actually took out. Hopefully this is making some sense. And... We just paid a whole bunch of extra. So now our principal, our actual loan, we still have, like, we have only 362,000 credits left to pay. And you can see on the right here, payment has gone, it was 200, it was 2,200 credits per day was what it was. Now it has gone down, because we paid a whole bunch of extra, it, it has gone down to... 1,900 credits. Hopefully this is making sense. The reason that, that it, it affects the, uh, the the reason that the payment amount changed, because this interest number here, the 0.400%, uh, that's a percentage of the principal. So when the, when the principal goes down, then that means the interest goes down, which means that the payment goes down as well. Hopefully this is making sense. Anyways, if uh, if anything like that's unclear or or whatever, then uh, then let me know. I'd love to I'd love to know uh, what what you guys' thoughts are. But anyways, so we just paid a whole bunch of extra. Now we have about fifty thousand credits left in our pocket, and we actually <laughs> come to think of it, that's a lot of credits in your pocket. Like if someone were walking around with fifty fifty thousand dollars in their pocket, that would be. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that would be a lot of money. Okay, anyways, let's get back to the point. The point is, we're done with this, for now. So, 
the idea is I'm going to keep making more money and keep gaining uh, gaining money, gaining uh, in interest. Uh, not interest. I want to keep reducing the interest. Anyways, I'm going to keep gaining more money from jobs. And as we keep gaining more money, our, uh, I always want to keep it above 50000 Because that way, if an emergency happens of some sort, we still have 50,000 credits to deal with it. So, that is the idea. So, as we keep getting more money, I'll keep feeding it into this uh, mortgage. And then, eventually, the mortgage will be paid off, and then we will have nothing to pay. And, actually, you can see if I press depart here. You can see down it, that text that's at the bottom of the screen, which is kind of like your... Uh, simulation chat kind of idea because this is a single player game but anyways you can see it says oh dear it's fading okay i'm gonna go ahead and land and then do it again whoa was i just uh i was just selecting something okay anyways so depart again and it says you paid 1909 credits in mortgage payments so that uh, that gives you some idea what's happening so every time we exit a planet or we jump to another system or we I think if we land on a planet as well I'm not sure uh, but every time we do that let's just find out let's land on the planet every time we do one of those things another day happens and okay so it's only when taking off anyways every time we do one of those things another day happens and we have to pay more money in the bank so that's yeah so that's uh, the idea so we're gonna continue Later on, uh, like next episode and stuff, we're going to continue paying off this mortgage, doing more of the story. Anyways, let's actually continue the story a little bit right now, and let's uh, find out what's happening next time. So, spaceport. You find James talking with a group of miners, who seem to be old acquaintances of his. As you approach, he says, Well, guys, here comes my ride. I should probably say goodbye. They, they head back off to do their work. Every time I land here, says James, I'm amazed that this station hasn't been wiped out yet by a meteorite. Can you imagine spending your life here? Eh, uh, I guess not with meteorites gonna fall from the sky. Hmm, maybe. Anyways, we could say, it does seem awfully isolated, but some people might enjoy the solitude. Or we could say, well, if you need the money, at least it's a steady job. You know what? Let's, uh, enjoy the solitude. I suppose, he says. Anyway, I think it's time for the last leg of my journey. Do you think you can give me a lift to Hestia? I'll pay you quite well for your services, of course. So we can say, sure, I can take you there. Or we can say, sorry, I was thinking of heading in a different direction from here. Uh, yep, yeah, we can go. Once again, you walk back to your ship with James. Once you get there, as he's stowing his luggage you pull up the information your computer has on Hestia. It's one of the paradise worlds, terraformed to have a perfect climate, accessible only to the very wealthy. You wonder whether James is going to be able to fit in there. Hmm, that's interesting. Done. And, yeah. So let's find out where he, he uh, whatever the name was, is. It's over here. And apparently, my uh, the, the guy that's me in the story has more information on this planet than I actually do on the map. So anyways, we are going to go ahead and head to that system over there. And we are going to do that next episode. So hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, the video. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. And if you have any suggestions for... For challenges or whatever I I still I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this a challenge series or if I'm gonna do it just like sort of normal and then do challenges later on maybe a, another time through the game or something I don't know but anyways if you have any suggestions for challenges let me know in the comments and that, that would be uh, greatly appreciated but anyways yeah so hopefully you're enjoying the video uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you're enjoying the series and see you later bye bye